Joins me on Talking Pints. Welcome to the show. Cheers. Now, Russian emigre, Russian dad, Ukrainian mum. So I guess that's been a pretty stressful mm. experience over the last eight months or so. But you come to this country and you completely embrace the culture of this country and you become a comedian. How is it? It's interesting, isn't it? A comedian who is, it seems to me, you're so upset by cancel culture, by the limitations that increasingly come on free speech, that's, that now you're a blogger, a commentator, and you've almost become a political activist. Well, I hope I haven't become a political activist because they're all usually crazy. Well, but well, a campaign activist. You, yes. Well, there's certain things I... The, the thing that upsets me the most, Nigel, is I think we're undermining some of the values that made this country what it actually was, which is a pretty great place to be. And the idea that we should be able to make jokes, that we should be able to speak freely, that we should be able to robustly but respectfully discuss political ideas, uh, that seems to me quite important. And the fact that we seem to be throwing that away, I think, is very dangerous. So more than anything, I just think we need to remember actually what is great about Britain and more broadly the Anglosphere and the West in general and focus on that uh, instead of, uh, you know, look, we're going to bash each other about all the time over politics. That's what we've but always that's done. that's fair enough. Yeah. I mean, what is horrific, and I know you talk about it and you, you've got trigonometry or podcasts, mm. which is very popular. Um, it, it, it's this, we could have an argument yes. over a drink. We could agree to disagree mm. and respect the right of somebody else to have a different point of view. But how do you see, I mean, with big media, with big tech, I mean, are we really moving into an age of censorship? We could be. And that's why maybe to the extent that I am active or an activist, that's why I think about those things very carefully, because I think the Internet is in many ways the solution to the problem. But that's where the big tech part of what you're what you're talking about comes in. Are they going to censor everybody who has a different opinion? And mm. so far they do occasionally, but it hasn't been too bad. And I, that's why, you know, you mentioned trigonometry. That's an out yeah. for people. It's an opportunity to I've hear. Appeared, different... I've appeared. Yeah. And, and we've also had you know, the the co-founder of Extinction Rebellion on the show. We try yeah. to have pe people yeah. from different points of view. Uh, and I think that's really important. And online allows you to do that, which is why the show is, I think, successful. So, but that's fine. But you rely on YouTube mm. to allow you to put your content out. If yeah. YouTube get hacked off with you tomorrow, you've got a problem, haven't you? I do. I do. And that, that's why I am very, very aware of the fact that we've got to make sure that as our society moves forward, all this new technology, we preserve the right of people to speak freely, mm. to express their opinions, to joke, to, to mock, to satirize things, to say things that people don't want to hear. That is what free speech is about. And if we can start there, then we can start building a more positive culture, I think, around all of these things. Because uh, you grew up under Soviet communism. Mm. You left the country... What, you were about 10 when the Berlin Wall uh, fell? Uh, yes, yeah. So you've lived under a communist system. Yeah. And the remarkable thing is Constantine's book, An Immigrant's Love Letter to the West. And I have to say, the book did get very, very good reviews. Just explain to the audience, and we've done a little bit of it mm. already, explain to the audience why you wrote this book. Well, I, first, I think someone should uh, write a book uh, actually defending the West and some of its values. And by the way, maybe reminding people what they actually are, because we seem to have forgotten. Uh, I noticed that people, you know, people sort of f f flinch when you suggest that there is such a thing as Western values or British values. And I actually think uh, they're worth defending. They're worth protecting. They're worth talking about. We should find out what it is that makes us who we are. What, and in, particularly in the world that we're about to live in, where Russia and China are becoming very strong threats. To, to us. And they're different to us. They think differently. They have different values. So we've got to work out what it is that we believe and what makes us who we are so that we can present, first of all, to ourselves a vision of our future but that is inspiring. But we're a terrible country. We're a terrible country. We're the <laughs> only country in the world that ever, ever used slavery. Uh. We're the only country in the world that ever adopted colonialism. Uh. I mean, it is unbelievable what some of our youngsters are being taught at school and university. You would think honestly, to listen to some of this, that we are uniquely bad. Where does this self-loathing come from amongst us? I think we're victims of our own success, Nigel.
uh, we've been so prosperous and so comfortable and so safe and things have been so stable for so long, it's very tempting to look inward and to start navel gazing and being all introspective about, aren't we? You know, this privilege that we actually, people talk about this type of privilege and that. The greatest privilege we have is Western privilege. <clears throat> and that's sort of something that we ignore and pretend doesn't exist. And that's why we invent all this stuff to obsess about. As you say, you know, I talk about slavery and all of this stuff in chapter three of the book, because I think most people in the West actually don't realize that slavery had gone on through the entire history of humanity, probably. No, surely not. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, uh, there are plenty of writers, uh, including many black writers and sociologists and historians who have detailed, for example, the trans-Saharan slave trade, which was much worse, happening at exactly the same time as the transatlantic slave trade, um, and only stopped because the Western colonial nations invested a huge amount of money in preventing this from carrying on. Uh, so I think we We've got to have a measure view. Look, no one would suggest that the British Empire was perfect, uh, but I think it's important to remember the Ottomans yeah, it, yeah. and the Russians weren't yeah. woke either. Say, it wasn't uniquely bad, and that's yeah. really that, that's yeah. really the point. I we think. can only be just in our own time, and, and I think that that's really the thing that people need to take <clears throat> away from all of this. Kemi Badenoch had a run recently at being Prime Minister. She was never going to win, mm. but put down some very important, I thought, cultural markers. Which way is this battle going? Are we winning or losing at the moment? Well, it depends how much I've had to drink now so when I answer that question. Uh, I think that we're making progress. I don't think we're winning. I think we're starting to win some battles. When I see that, you know, something like the Free Speech Union, for example, is an organization that defends people who've said the no, wrong thing. Toby Young, who's sat in that chair before. And absolutely. whatever their political views, by yeah. the way, he, he, yeah. he's obviously on the right, but he will defend people on the left who, who, who get into trouble. I see people in culture, in my space that I come from, starting to have conversations, not just about, you know, how do we stop ourselves being cancelled, but actually... How do we create comedy uh, of a mm. different kind? How, we, how do we allow musicians who have the wrong opinion to express themselves? All of these things are going to take shape over time. So what we need to do is build a more positive counterculture that's cool, uh, because eventually all this extreme progressivism will become boring and, and stale and people won't want to be part of it. And we've got to have something punk going on in the countercultural space. And that's what I'm excited about. But no, I, I, as I look outside into the world, I don't think we're winning right now. But we are starting, I think, to, to, to shape yeah. the, the movements that will well, change it. Keep going, and thank you for coming on Talking Thanks Price. for having me.